Good day, good day, good day, everyone. And we are back again together. All right. And um, I hope if n not, nothing else, you know, I've been able to show you that uh, physics can be fun, first of all. And secondly, physics, there's really, really nothing difficult, you know, uh, about it. Um, uh, I really appreciate all the comments that we've been receiving, uh, you know, the positive feedback, the emails and, and so on. And um, by the way, if you haven't yet subscribed on our channel, please just uh, add to those numbers. OK, we want to grow as big as possible so that, you know, we uh, uh, we really can be able to reach as far and wide as we possibly can. And uh, by the way, for those of you who need assistance with either mathematics or physical science, you're more than welcome to just uh, uh, send us an email. And our email address is info at mlungisingosi, uh, my name and surname, and uh, .co.za. So that's info at mlungisingosi.co.za. All right, so we are still looking at that Mpumalanga paper, okay, that was written in South Africa, Mpumalanga province. Hey, the province of the sun, hey, right? So they say uh, in question eight, this is based on electrostatics, okay? They say in the diagram below, we are given point charge Q that has a charge of minus eight nanocoulombs. And please remember, nano there is times 10 minus nine, right? They say X and Y are points 12 centimeters and 20 centimeters from point charge Q, respectively. All right, so please remember there's no charge there. These are just points, right? Um, so they say, first of all, define the term electric field at a point. And please remember, the moment they ask you to define something, uh, there are greater chances that you're going to have to apply or use it uh, in the questions that are following, right? So they say, uh, define the term electric field at a point. Okay, remember electric field. This is the area where electro, uh, electrostatic force can be felt per unit charge. Okay, right. So um, that's 8.1. Of course, I am not going to write that down. You're supposed to know that. You can write it for yourself. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm very lazy. Okay. So uh, at which point is the electric field due to charge Q stronger uh, they say choose X or Y. Now, please remember that electric field, okay, so um, so when you calculate electric field, it's KQ over R squared, right? Electric field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. What does that mean? It means that the shorter the distance, the greater that electric field will be. So think about it. Where is it closer? Where are we closer to the charge? Uh, that is at point X. So our answer there should be should be stronger at point X. Okay. Right. Now let's go to the third question. Uh, 8.3.1. We're moving very swiftly through this, right? So now they give us. Uh, they say three times ten. Uh, three times ten to the power ten electrons. Uh, are added at point charge Q, all right? They say a second point charge R um, with a charge of 6 times 10 to the power minus 8 coulombs is placed at point Y. So now I'm going to draw that scenario, right? So remember we already had X, which was minus 8 nanocoulombs, right? Okay, so uh, uh, not X, rather Q. Okay, so this is point charge Q, which was minus 8. Now they place a second uh, charge there, um, which is uh, at Y. All right, and they say the magnitude of that um, point charge R. Okay, so this is R here, is going to be. 6 times 10 to the power minus 8. So uh, that's 6 times 10 to the power minus 8 coulombs. All right. Uh, they say it is placed where we had Y. Right. Um, oh, by the way, uh, I, I didn't see that. Okay. Uh, sorry. So it means that the charge of X, 
uh, of Q rather is going to change because remember they added electrons. So the question is how would that charge change? All right. So the uh, what would be the net charge uh, on Q? All right. But we'll get to that in just a little while. So let's look at uh, they say calculate the charge of Q after the electrons were added. OK. So first of all, what would be the we know the number of electrons rather that have been added. Right. And what would be the charge that has been added? Now, remember, uh, I'm just going to pull out a question paper here and show you. Uh, this equation here shows you the number of electrons is equal to the charge divided by the unit charge of an electron. So uh, we want the charge. We know the unit charge of an electron. By the way, you are given that okay, in your table of constants. Okay. Uh, on the other side, just uh, to show you there. Uh, you are always given the charge of an electron. Uh, it's that value there, minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, right? Uh, to the power minus 19. So in this case, remember, uh, let me just delete that uh, because we're looking for the charge of Q afterwards, right? So I'm going to say how much charge was added. We said, well, number of electrons is equal to the charge. I want to know how much charge was added. And I know the unit charge of an electron, so that's E. So we added 3 times 10 to the power 10 electrons. We want to know what is the charge that was added. And we know the magnitude, or rather the unit charge of an electron is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Now, please, I'm going to use the negative there because I know electrons are negatively charged, right? So uh, let's see. So this is going to be 3 times 10 to the power 10, okay? And multiplied by, so I'm going to cross multiply there. Q times 1 is Q, okay? So multiplied by 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. And what do I get? I get a charge of minus 4.8 times 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs. Now remember, this charge here was actually added to the existing charge of, my, of uh, uh, yeah, uh, minus 8 times 10 to the power minus 9. So what I'm simply going to do it means that the net charge of Q or the new charge on Q, okay, is going to be the charge that we had, which was uh, minus 8 uh, times 10 minus 9. But we are going to add the new charge. And remember, we added electrons, right? So this guy should be more negative. So this is minus 4.8, okay, uh, times 10 to the power minus 9. So please remember that, times 10 to the power minus 9, okay. So what would be the new charge? Uh, so I'm going to say plus, okay, so I get a value of, um, all right, so that's 8 plus 4.8. Ah, you might as well just say minus 12.8 times 10 minus 9 coulombs. Okay, or you can just simply say it's minus 1.28 times 10 minus 8. It's the same thing. All right, so this is the new charge on Q. All right, now they say to you, Calculate the magnitude of the net electric field at point X. So remember, Q has a new charge, all right? And we had the charge R there, which is positive 6. And we want to know uh, if we place a charge at X, right? Uh, if that's our X there, what will happen or what will be the, mag the magnitude of the uh, of the net charge, net electric field rather. Okay, so 
remember what I normally do when I want to calculate that okay so there's Q there what's the new charge on Q we said it's minus 12.8 times 10 to the power minus 9 coulombs and what's the charge this is the charge on Q okay and we've got another charge there on R we said that was positive 6 times 10 to the power minus 8 uh, coulombs now remember in order for us to calculate electric field there's an assumption that we make now ladies and gents if you do not understand what I'm going to talk about now it means you haven't watched our videos on electrostatics please go and do that for yourself right now we're looking for the electric field at X so in order for us to calculate the electric field we make an assumption we assume that there is a positive test charge at that point X there okay so we assume that there's an imaginary positive test charge and what will happen to that positive test charge now first of all I'm going to check that positive test charge against Q and secondly I'm going to test that positive test test charge against R so first let's look at Q if we assume that the test charge will be the one that moves right how will Q affect that point charge at Q there uh, at X rather right do you agree with me that it will attract it okay so if it was to move where would it move because of X it would be attracted towards X uh, I mean towards Q so it means the electric field that Q exert on that uh, point charge is towards the left okay right so this is going to be the field due to Q but now what is uh, the magnitude of the or, or rather what is the direction of the field now let's forget about Q for a moment let's look at R so if R if R is positive and X the point charge the imaginary point charge is also positive what are they doing to each other they are repelling each other so where will uh, the point charge move uh, uh, in relation to R it will move away from R it will be pull it will be pushed away from R because they are repelling each other so therefore it means that the field due to R would also be uh, towards the left so Q is pulling this guy uh, R is pushing this guy in the same direction so they are going to uh, R so this is going to be the field due to R right so both of them are moving in the same direction right so I'm going to say well this is going to be EQ all right so this is going to be K the charge of Q divided by R squared okay that's 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by the charge there is 12.8 please remember you don't need to put the sign here the only thing that matters is uh, um, the magnitude but remember we use the sign to determine the direction because this guy was negative it pulled this guy that way because this guy is positive it pushes uh, the test charge away so divided by now what would be the distance between uh, remember between uh, Q and X all right you remember that distance was given as 12 okay so there it is there it was given as 12 centimeters so it means that this is going to be 12 centimeters remember 12 centi is times 10 minus 2 or you can say divide by 100 okay please remember those things that are quite important all right okay squared all right uh, we're going to calculate that and then uh, let's also find the field due to R okay uh, at X right uh, this is was the field due to Q okay at X so that's going to be KQ 
r divided by r squared again. So I would say 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by, remember, what is the charge uh, of r? We said this is 6 times 10 minus 8. What would be the distance between them? We're given that distance to be 20 centimeters. Okay, the distance between, they said we place it at y, and we know y was 20 centimeters away. So this is going to be 20 times 10 to the power minus 2 again, centi. Okay, right, how many cents are in a rent? That's a, that's 100, right? So once we say centi, you must remember that it has to do with 100. All right, now let's find the values. Let's find the fields there. Let's calculate. I get a value of 8,000 for this one. So that's 8,000. Remember, electric field is measured in newtons per coulomb, right? Please remember that this is not a force. This is a field. So uh, it's newtons per coulomb. But we, in which direction did it go? It went to the left. So if we take direction to the left as positive, okay, so this is to the left, or you can say uh, towards the west. And then uh, let's find the other answer for this guy. Okay, and for this one, I get a value of 13,500 newtons per coulomb. And by the way, uh, it would also be in the same direction. So it was also to the left, or you can say uh, uh, towards the, the west. Now, uh, remember, we are looking for the net field. That's what they asked us to find, right? The net electrostatic field. So what would be the net? It would be at the, as a result of these two, right? So it means this guy acting in that direction, uh, EQ acting in that direction and the other one acting in the same direction as well so what would be the net it would be the sum of both of them because um, uh, in this case they are heading in the same direction so in this case i'm going to simply say that e net remember we chose that as positive it would simply be e uh, q plus e r and you just add those two together. So that would be 8,000 plus 13,500. And that would give us 21,500 newtons per coulomb. In which direction would that be? Of course, it would be to the left. Now, perhaps someone might want to ask, but what would be the case uh, if, uh, suppose, R was negative? So you'd get two fields, one going to the right and another one going to the left. And what you do to the net, of course, it would be the difference between them. If you chose one to be positive, let's say if you chose right to be positive, then you'd have this one going to be right uh, to the right uh, being positive and the one going to be uh, to the left as negative, okay? And of course, it means that the net would be the difference between those. All right, uh, I hope that has been helpful, okay? And please don't forget to subscribe, ladies and gents, and we will see each other in the not-too-distant future. All right, sharp, sharp.